Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we build business, create community, find freedom, and share success. It's Sunday night, which means it's time for another live edition of Talking Tools. How's everybody out there tonight? We have a really cool special guest tonight, uh, Skylar Gibbler of the G Tribe Chronicles. <laughs> I got all that out really well. That's awesome. He's on to tell us about his incredible journey. I don't want to spoil it. But how they bought a property, I would say they really shined up a turd, a $10,000 house. They turned into an incredible thing. They turned around. Anyway, I don't want to ruin it, but he's going to tell us all about why they chose to move into the country in his journey with homesteading. So real quick, guys, before we dive in, we bring Skylar on. A couple of quick announcements. Next, well, this week coming, the live stream will be Thursday because Saturday, Sunday night is Halloween. So we're going to do Thursday the same time. And then the next week, we'll be back to our uh, same time, same night. And we're going to have Brian from the Lots Project coming on talking about RV living. Super, super excited about that. So as soon as we run our intro here, guys, we will have Skylar come on and uh, we'll have him share his story with us. So hang in there. Hey, Skylar, how are you? Hey, Tim. I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, no <laughs> worries. We, uh, we've had a little bit of technical difficulties, guys. I think we're going to be okay. We, we always make it through, but, uh, yeah. So if there's any little choppiness or any issues with the, uh, with the audio guys, just let us know. Uh, we'll say real quick, we got Ted in here with us and I know you're Joe. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for dropping in. So Skylar, tell me a little bit. Well, tell me who Skylar Gibbler is, what you're up to, where you're coming from your story. Cool. Well, before I do that, I want to tell you congratulations on 2,500 subs. That's super awesome. So Skylar uh, Gibbler is a father of four, married to my beautiful wife, Hannah, for like 12 years now. And I'm in my early 30s. So we got married pretty young and don't regret a minute of it. <laughs> um, I think it's funny. I was listening to your, your story uh, that you posted for your 2,500 sub thing. And I can relate to a lot of what you went through, you know, with being dead broke and <laughs> all that stuff. I, uh, we were in that same boat when we got married. So that's, uh, that's definitely us. We, um, I do a lot of actually the same stuff you do. Um, a lot of handyman remodeling contracting type stuff. And, um, you know, we sold our house and moved into mom's basement and we're buying three acres and we're going to build a house in the country, a homestead. So, so tell me about, nutshell. you guys got to check out uh, his channel. I uh, just, tonight I took some time and watched a few more of his videos, but tell me about your $10,000 house. <laughs> tell tell <laughs> Man, us that story. So, it's awesome. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. So um, yeah, we, I had quit a job and um, I had uh, I had been contributing to my retirement or whatever. Well, it wasn't a huge <laughs> amount of money. So, you know, I didn't really have a way to roll it into anything. So we just took it out and we were just saving it. And um, we were living in we were renting a house for my brother in law and he put it on the market and it sold like really fast. And we had been looking and couldn't really find anything. Well, we found this house and um we were really trying to stay out of debt. That was like our main goal. We were having a hard time doing it because you don't generally find houses for ten thousand um, dollars <laughs> in our area. Even in our area, that's that's really cheap, and we have pretty cheap real estate compared to the rest of the country. But um, yeah, we we managed to get this place for ten thousand dollars, and it was in a small kind of rural town, and it needed an insane amount of work. It was it was really run down. It was a foreclosure and it had sat on the market, you know, with nobody in it for a year plus. And we did a ton of work to it and we just sold it a mm, couple, two, three months ago now. And we made a huge profit on it. Um, and that's what's funding our homestead. So, so it was that video. I think the first video that we put up was actually that story. So, and you definitely don't do it justice because it was, I mean, the place was in rough shape, wasn't it? <laughs> Be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It was real bad. Um, you know, just the most dated interior you could think of really foolish layout. And I mean, the bathroom 
just to give you an example, so the bathroom was, this house was over 100 years old, so the bathroom was added on after it was built. And it was just tucked back in the corner of the house. And the tub was a smaller than standard tub, and it would still not fit in the bathroom. So they had like notched out the wall so the tub would fit in there. Oh. It was just, it was really, it was really bad. We pulled all the plumbing out of it. We pulled a lot of the electrical out of it. We hauled away a roll off dumpster worth of lab and plaster. Um, it was a one bath, two bedroom when we bought it. And when we sold it, it was a two bath, four bedroom. So yeah, we did, we did a lot. <laughs> A bunch. Yeah, we were we were chatting <laughs> earlier, guys, and uh, yeah, if you take a minute and watch this video, it's pretty cool. But like, you know, I'm a handyman, and there's some projects I'll take on. But some of the stuff he did, man, it inspired me. Like, what I seen you guys, you actually raised the roof or kind of built in a dormer. What, mm -hmm. what exactly did you do upstairs? Okay, so it's like a story and a half. The house was, and um, it was really weird. Upstairs, there was only one actual bedroom, and then just open space upstairs and we wanted to add a bathroom. so we changed the pitch of the roof it was a very steep pitch we changed it you know to something more like this so we could accommodate a full-size bedroom in there so we pulled down all of the rafters that were in there and extended the exterior my hands not in frame <laughs> it's okay my hands um <laughs> extended the exterior wall up and changed the pitch of the roof on the back of the house. And then it made it to where we could squeeze a decent sized master and a uh, bathroom in there without, you know, having a four foot ceiling. So it was quite so, the project. You guys were settled in there and, you know, you had your $10,000 home that you shined up and made look beautiful. So what inspired uh, you and the missus to, to sell it? And uh, well, and tell us where you're living right now. Well, I don't know that the missus was inspired quite like I was. <laughs> I kind of sprung it on her. Um, so we've both wanted to be in the country since we've been married. We're both, we actually, <laughs> kind of weird, that's a, another story in and of itself, but we actually grew up on the same road when we were in our teens, back okay. when we fell in love. Um, and that was out in the country. And we moved into town because we found a good deal on a house and we were trying to stay out of debt. But we wanted to get out to the country and couldn't afford it. And when all these house prices went through the roof, I kind of saw our opportunity to hopefully sell high. And then since we're going to do most of the work, not necessarily buy high and, mm -hmm. and kind of max kind of arbitrage, you know, more or less the house. Um, so I kind of sprung it on her like, Hey, we're going to, we need to sell this house. We're going to do it. And we just, I pretty much didn't work for money for like three months and just, banged out projects on the house constantly so it was um, you took advantage then, of the market then hey yeah we had to i mean and since then i've talked to my realtor and she's already got a lot less work so i think we just barely kind of snuck in under the deadline <laughs> you uh yeah so, I, joe uh know your joe wanted to know uh what what area you're in skylar okay so we're, we're just south of kansas city missouri yeah, um, but not too far from the city. So I, I have worked in the city a fair bit on projects, but I'm really trying to rein it in and make it more local and try to work kind of in the county because they're more my type of people. And you're you're self-employed? Yeah, so I do pretty much what you do. Um, Good idea. I do a lot of decks, a lot of remodeling, stuff like that. So How long you been a handyman? I don't know why I did quotes, but uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, um, so on my own about two years, um, I've done a lot of it with my father and a good friend of mine while I was doing other stuff in the past. And, um, they really imparted a lot of knowledge to me and kind of some of the common sense that makes me make the crazy decision to tackle the stuff that I do. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go off script just a little bit here, but so when you're, sure. when you're dealing with a big project like that, how do you, how do you start? Like what, what, what's kind of your mental process? Cause I know kind of what I do, but I always love to learn from people, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I mean, I always start with the bid obviously. And so really getting into doing the stuff on my own was the hardest part was learning how to bid stuff. Um, because in the past, you know, I could make the boards go together and do the thing, but 
yep. knowing how long that was going to take me and kind of seeing the potential for things to go wrong. That's the, that's the hard part. So, you know, I usually just look at the project and I try to figure out, okay, how many days is this going to take me? Um, and I kind of base my bids on a day rate, like what I want to make. And um, so I, you know, try to give myself a little cushion. I don't, you know, I don't mind working hard, but I don't want to kill myself. And if you bid jobs too tight, you usually, you know, don't enjoy doing it and it just mm -hmm. goes out. So I usually, you know, go that route and then I go and figure up my material and, um, you know, pitch it to the customer. And if they're happy with it, I'm happy. And then we, we dive in. So, and I've got, you know, if it's something that I'm not super comfortable with, um, as far as something I haven't done before, haven't bid before, I've got quite a range of people I can talk to that can really help me with that because I've got a big family in the area and a lot of them are tradesmen. So that, that's it, helps. It's lot. nice. Hey, eh? I, the old timers, you know, they call it a Rolodex or a stack of business cards. I don't know what we call it nowadays, but yep. if I, I'm telling you, if you don't have, if you don't have a group of people or other experts you can call on you. I don't know if you, I, I don't want to say you shouldn't be doing what we do, but man, I'm telling you, it's a huge help, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be hard. It's funny. You say Rolodex. I was just at my grandpa's the other day and, um, he used to be a drywall contractor. He moved to Kansas city to learn the trade back when it first came about. Mm -hmm. And he had an eighth grade education. He grew up in the Missouri mountains and, you know, he was walk to school kind of guy. And, uh, he, I was over there talking to him about I needed some gravel for our driveway, and he goes and busts out his Rolodex and flips through it. <laughs> Boom! Here's your guy, and uh, it's it's pretty funny that you mentioned that because that's dead on. Well, Chris Chris sticks in here white from White North Forge. He says it's still called a Rolodex. So I yep. absolutely, you know, I uh, I don't know what I use. I use a combination of uh, you know just keeping it in my phone and notepad and everything else. But I don't know. I find in small towns, it's almost as easy to drop by and talk to somebody in person as it is to to call them up and chat. I, sometimes it isn't, but that's that's small town yeah. life, you know. That's a benefit of being self employed too. You can do that if you need to. Oh, I love it. And has that? I mean, has that given you some flexibility in your work or in in this project that you and the, the missus are working on now? Or oh, totally. And that's really a lot of a lot of the reason that we live the way we do is so we can have the flexibility. Um, I, we have four kids and we homeschool them all. And hmm. so it's nice to be able to peel away from a project and help mom if she's got to go to a doctor's appointment or, you know, who knows what, or I can take the kids to work with me on a lot of my projects are for people that I know pretty well. And they're, if, you know, if it's appropriate, I'll bring one or two of the boys along and they can learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. It gives ton of flexibility me being self-employed and so right we do the project i'm really going to try to only work like one week out of the month um to pay bills and then the rest yep. of the time i'll be working on the house that way we're not doing it for five years <laughs> do you find uh being i mean being self-employed at least i found and i don't want to sound funny but you don't have to work as hard to make the money you need do you know what i mean like there's there's more time yeah. around you like yeah it's awesome hey yep yeah, for sure. I mean, if and it makes sense if you think about it, because employees are, you know, they're working for someone and that person is generally marking up their their labor. And so there's that that wage gap in there, you know, that they're not benefiting from. And there's some other mm -hmm. benefits that come from being employed, too. But um, yeah, definitely. I can I can make a lot better money in a shorter period of time now that I work for myself than in the past when I was an employee. So. That's it's a oh, huge blessing for sure. Yeah, like I, uh, this year I decided not knock on wood not to work weekends, and it's you know I didn't make any less money this year than I did the first three years working seven days a week. You know, so it it's definitely yeah, yeah it I, the flexibility of entrepreneurship. I know we talk about it on here all the time, but it, it's nice to have other guys on here. Uh, Joseph's in here as yep. well. He he he's into everything, but he has a I'd call it more of a construction than a handyman business, and he has. Uh, hmm. Uh, rentals and things too. And he, he knows about it. Oh, but cool. Yeah. Very so cool. you guys are doing this entire journey. You've done it so far debt free, basically. Yes. Yes. And that's the plan to stay that way. Um, I, I say that's the plan. That's, I mean, we won't deviate from that unless yep. something insane happens. And then we don't have any credit, so I don't know how we would deviate from it. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, um, that's kind of intentional, but 
we um we should hopefully have enough money from the from the sale of the house to um to buy the land and build the house we might get to you know 90 percent done with the project and realize we need to keep up another few thousand dollars or something but um it's kind of hard to tell now with material prices are so crazy and you know yeah so we don't really oh come on are you serious <laughs> <laughs> I did, that's I part of the know. reason we chose to go with the icf because i mean wood was so insane there for a while and it's gotten better but a lot of the osb and stuff is still pretty high and it's the the gap between you know conventional framing and icf is so much smaller than it usually is this is something i didn't know about joseph but he just i, I gotta mention it here guys but he said that he's talking about you being debt free but he said that's great mm -hmm. on debt free i'm approaching that for the first time in my adult life maybe three awesome. to six months and we will be there so <laughs> congratulations man good for you so what what do you guys like you know it's all fine and well to say hey we're debt free or whatever how i you know, especially if there's some young ones out there or people that aren't really sure, like what, what does that mean? Like how, do, how do you survive day to day? How have you guys kind of built uh wealth in a house or in a property without ever taking out a loan, you know? Yeah. Well, I think this is something that's an interesting question. So I think the biggest part, because a lot of people hear that and they say, oh, that's good for you, but that won't work for me. You know, I can't do that where I'm at or whatever. And I understand that. But the moment that you don't give yourself another option, you start getting really creative and mm -hmm. you start seeing opportunity where you normally wouldn't because you're not thinking that way. And I think that is probably the biggest thing I learned from this entire process. Um, and, you know, I'm not necessarily opposed to debt. Some people do it really well and really responsibly and it works really well for them. Um, I'm super disorganized. Hmm. And I 100% would screw it up. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot. That's got a lot to do with it. But, um, you know, I, we early on, we really followed like the Dave Ramsey kind of game plan. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. It seems like you are based on the way you smiled. But yeah, yeah. yeah he's a cool <laughs> dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dave's Dave's pretty all right. I don't really adhere to his line of thinking quite as strictly as I used to. But, you know, the thousand dollar emergency funds, a great first step. And kind oh, of yeah. This, baby steps for chopping down the debt and stuff, you know, that's all, that's all good stuff. Um, definitely don't drive nice cars. Um, we drive, you know, old used cars. My wife's nice car has 290,000 miles on it. And my work van, I paid $600 for it. <laughs> that's awesome. So, and yeah. And two more nicer cars, but there's no need for it. So that's awesome. Yeah. And 290,000 miles. That's like, 500,000 kilometers up here in these weird <laughs> Canadian, you know, so that that's half a million yeah. kilometers, you know, not yeah, that yeah. Uh, many of our listeners even, you know, can compute in kilometers, but that, that just blows my mind, you know, like, yeah, we we're stuck on freedom units down here. You know how it is. <laughs> I love my freedom unit. I, somebody asked me the other day, they're like, Tim, what, what do you use for a tape measure? Like, does it have metric? And I kind of had to laugh. I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> dude, like, you know, I, I mean, metric exists in its own little bubble, you know, for sure. certain things, but sure. yeah, no, I, I wouldn't, I could never imagine measuring something in centimeters and meters. I would be absolutely lost, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's, that's, I hadn't actually thought about that, but that makes sense. That's hilarious. Like you go in and, you know, you go into the hardware store and you don't order uh what would that, oh my goodness. Um, like you don't order a five centimeter by a 10 centimeter board, you know, it's a two before, right. Yeah. And eight yeah, feet yeah, long. Yeah. That's but then, of course, you know, government, they get their hand in. And of course, and if if you got to do a government uh, bid or something, I'm pretty sure a lot of that's in metric now. And it's just, oh, wow. yeah, I couldn't even. And some huh. electrical work and some mason work is in metric. We live in this really weird, like, combination of freedom units and <laughs> communism or something. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's fun, you know, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, colonialism or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, we we we, we still recognize the crown, you know. We we you guys fought for your freedom, and we just kind of laid there and said, "Please, could we have some more?" And then eventually, <laughs> they're like, "We're tired of you. Get away from us," you know. So, but uh, Ken, Ken's cool. Well, oh, Ken's if you awesome. Too, but he... a pinch, we'll, we'll help out. Oh, hey, absolutely. We thought about it. But... <laughs> 
Uh, Ken, Ken Cornelius. I always love Ken's name. His name always makes me smile because I always think of the rooster from Cornflakes. But he says they've been debt free their entire life, but we grew up in a different age. But, you know, I hear that said a lot, but it, it's still doable, isn't it? Because, I mean, you guys are a full 10 years younger than my wife and I, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So when Ken says he grew up in a different age, a lot of that boils down to we've changed our, um, our standard, our expectations for standard of living. And, in, in Oh day. yeah. So, you know, if you go back to, I see a lot of people make comments about how, Oh, you used to be able to one person's income would support the family and all this. And I, I agree, but at the same time, you had one car, you had probably no TV, no cell phones, <laughs> you know, mom, mended clothes and had a garden and you know probably had sold some eggs on the side or whatever and you know the kids you know didn't have a million clothes they they lived more simple back then and that's what allowed them to be debt free and i mean being debt free in a lot of ways just boils down to sacrifice so that you can can be there but um in this day and age man it has paid off in dividends i don't have a you know somebody telling me i have to get a medical procedure or wear a certain thing or, you know, not to get too political or anything, but yeah. I have friends all around me who are dealing with that. And I'm, I, it's weird. Cause I mean, it's, I feel like I'm in a little bubble <laughs> well, being a, I mean, and also I'm, I'm thinking too, like, and I'm sure you've ran into it with me, but, um, or like same as us, but being an entrepreneur kind of insulates you a fair bit from that too, doesn't it? Yes. And it takes a lot of the stress out of being an entrepreneur too, because since we're debt free, our bills are way lower. So, you know, if I have a slow month, um, you know, it's not the end of the world, um, you know, just hang out with the family some more, you know? So that's, yeah. Um, being an entrepreneur is definitely goes hand in hand with being debt free. It seems like in, in my case, at least. That's cool. I love it. I, and I know we, we plug entrepreneurship on here, but man, I'm telling you, and I mean, Skylar is a hundred percent, you know, an, an example of it, but <laughs> there's nothing better if you want to have independence and freedom than to be your own boss, because, you know, uh, the, the second best time to do something's now. And I, I wish I'd have done it 10 years ago, but four years ago was good enough. Right. And it, yeah. any, any time's better than no time. Right. So. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it doesn't come without its challenges either. As you know, I mean, you're, you have to, everything falls on your shoulders and you're, mm -hmm. you know, when the angry phone calls happen or the, or the money getting lost happens, that affects you directly. But you know, it all comes out in the wash. It does. But you know, you, I'm sure you're like me, you, you, even though you take your weekends off or whatever, you, your brain is always thinking about work. Uh, you know, you're, you're always, it doesn't matter if you take a vacation or go somewhere or do anything. You're, your brain is always on the job. You may not work as many hours, but your brain works way more hours. For, for sure. Yeah. There's been a few times I wake up in the middle of the night and realize, you know, something about a job or something. And my wife's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you fretting at, uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't fret out loud very often. So it really surprises her. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So let's slide back. I guess, I mean, this is awesome. I love it. Like entrepreneurship, debt-free living. It's, it's cool. So now you guys are on a journey toward homesteading. So why did you see so Tell me a little bit about the land that you're looking at or that you're in the process of, I think you said you've almost got it. And why did you choose yeah, to build it's, it? It's as good as ours. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we're buying three acres from my parents. They've got a larger chunk of land, and um, there's a lot of there's been a lot of benefits to buying from them versus trying to find some land somewhere else in our area. One is that it wasn't ever for sale, so <laughs> you know, the timeline wasn't nearly as tight on selling the house. You know, we knew it would be there when we were ready, which was really great. Um, and I've always been a fan of trying to buy an old homestead instead of just raw land. Um, generally there's some benefits that come with that, like, you know, nice trees or like we talked about before we came on, we have a really nice cistern that I'm really excited about. Um, there was a semblance of a driveway there. We're, um, we're cleaning it up quite a bit. Um, there usually are some fruit trees on the property, maybe a mm -hmm. pond. We do have a pond. The pond's in bad shape, but you know, it's all right. We'll fix that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, 
it's not a big piece of land by any means, but we'll be able to kind of increase our independence on it. And um, we will kind of have access to, you know, the larger piece of property and we'll be mm -hmm. doing some things in combination with my parents. Like, um, you know, we won't have enough land for cattle per se on our piece, but we can team up together and kind of do that on our own if we want to. So, so what's, yeah. what's the permitting process like in good old Missouri? Well, it varies by <laughs> county. So um, Missouri is pretty chill as far as the state is concerned. Um, I think really their only state regulation is like for septic. You know, you, they don't want you daylighting your, your business out into the street or anything like that, which is pretty understandable. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of counties in our area that have basically no codes, um, oh. maybe with the exception of, um, you know, like something to do with septic, they might have you pull a permit and then, you know, never say booty after that. Um, our county is a little stricter, but I'm kind of taking the agorist route with a lot of that. <laughs> don't ask, um, don't tell. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, doing what I do, I can kind of tell what, what, is feasible and what's not. So it kind of gives me a little bit of insight. Without getting you into any trouble or anything, what's the septic system like where you're at or like, what are your, you know, plans or how, where you're yeah, so, I mean, Yeah. Yeah. So we do lateral fields in our area. Mostly some people do what we call potty ponds where they just, you know, they'll have, they'll build an above ground holding tank that's open air and mm -hmm. everything goes into that. That's, only in rural areas that doesn't ever happen in town, but they'll, um, they'll let their waste go in there and nature will more or less handle it. Um, but we will do, we don't have the room for that. Um, so we're going to do an underground lateral field. So, um, Missouri has like a 27 page document with how to deal with all that stuff, how to test your soil, how, you know, how many feet of lateral you need per room in the house and all that stuff. So we're going to, adhere to all that stuff because we want to do a good job uh, mm -hmm. we're just not gonna pay people money to come bother us if we don't have to so absolutely yeah and uh, chris <laughs> says a person could go broke just permitting a job in alberta and uh you know if there's a if there's a province oh, in canada that has freedom it would be alberta but we are still <laughs> you know that's like saying well anyway there's there's a lot of things we could say about that but you know it's still right. you know be, being the most free and Canada sometimes isn't always what it's cracked up to be, but yeah, so it can be expensive. So that's good. I'm glad I was wondering and you, you know, because that's, that's a, that can be a huge problem, pain in the butt process, you know, yeah. is getting just the paperwork in place. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. We're dealing with enough paperwork, just um, getting the property uh, divided off from the larger lot. They have, you know, there's, each county has its own zoning laws and rules and stuff. And, um, you know, some are, some don't care. You can sell a, a star shaped half acre if you want. And some, you know, are very particular. So we have to go through some hoops to get the property divided off, but it's not terrible. And that's actually another spot where, um, having an old house on the property benefits us because it kind of gets us, um, through some of the red tape, which is kind of nice. See, that's what I was wondering, because where I grew up on the East Coast in Nova Scotia, that was always a big thing is people would always look to buy land in the country that had a house on it that mm -hmm. they could tear down because then a lot of times your septic or your electrical or a lot of different things were grandfathered in. So is that is that a little bit of the kind of that uh, situation for you? Yeah, to a degree. Um it allows you to buy a smaller plot of land without having to go through a zoning board and getting it approved uh, versus if you were to buy just raw land or uh, land that had a newer house on it. Okay. Um, I don't know, you know, I actually don't know about the, I haven't really looked into whether or not your septic is grandfathered in just because I don't intend to use what's there, but sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I'd actually have to look into that, but it's uh, it definitely comes with some of its perks. I mean, it's got its own address already, you know, and we, don't, we won't nice. mess with anything. We'll just throw up a mailbox, so that's cool. And you are comfortable or planning on building this entire thing from scratch yourself, basically? 
I don't know about comfortable, but I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love to hear that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I will hire out the concrete flat work. I've done just enough of that to know that I hate doing it. And there are people who are far better at it than I am. <laughs> and much Especially, quicker. Yes, much quicker and on a large scale. So, I mean, if you've ever done any concrete work, you know, it can get out of hand really fast, um, especially depending on the time of year that you're pouring. So I'm going to hire that out. Um, I, I can do drywall, but I despise it. And I have yeah. a ton of family that do it. So I'm going to hire an uncle to help <laughs> me um, do the drywall um, and he'll make it look better than I will faster than I will. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hiring an architect. Um, I could probably draw up the plans, but it's worth it to me to pay him um, the $2 a square foot to have his wisdom and knowledge on hand and uh, have a really nice set of plans that I can look at and work up all my costs and, you know, all that stuff. So that's, that's good. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable. Like I said earlier, I've got all these people I can ask questions to if need be. I have plumber friends. I have HVAC friends. I have electrician friends. Um, you know, none of that stuff is something I'm super comfortable with, but, um, you know, I can, I can ask anything I need to and get help if I have to, but, uh, yeah, we're going to do it. I, my, one of my biggest question marks or concerns was the ICF itself. Pouring that was kind of yeah. intimidating, but I actually had the chance to help with that. Uh, one of those just in the last few weeks. So I think I saw that you posted on social, didn't you, about that a little bit? Did I see you? Yeah, yeah, and we have a video. Yeah, we have a video on that. Um, yeah, nobody really does ICF in our area. It costs a little bit more up front, and, you know, everybody just goes with conventional framing. We're not in an insanely crazy climate area, um, so it's not, you know, our value on your wall is not as big of a concern as it might be in, like, your area or something. <laughs> but, yeah. um <laughs> I, I really want to build a house that's going to be an asset and not cost us an insane amount of money to live in. So that's kind of the reason we chose the ICF. And there was somebody a couple miles up the road who was actually doing an ICF uh, project. And I got in touch with them and was able to help with the with the poor. And I mean, that took like almost all of my concerns and chucked them out the window. It was really straightforward. And I'm not I'm not super worried about it now. So. It's funny how getting a chance to help somebody on a job can take away a whole bunch of anxiety, can it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it it was it was crazy, and it was actually funny. The um, one of the YouTube channels that I've been watching a lot of, doing a lot of research on um, ICF, he actually was at that job filming. Oh and no way! Yeah, so that was really crazy. He's been doing ICF for like seven years, so I got to pick his brain. And uh, we even talked YouTube a uh, fair bit. And uh, he's, his channel is actually really young. He started like a year ago. Um, and it blew up because he posted about an ICF pool. And ICF and pools were both super popular during COVID. Yep. And uh, so he got like 300,000 views on that video. And he was monetized in like 11 weeks or something. Crazy. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Good for him, man. I love hearing yeah. success. It, yeah. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Hey, whatever. Just one thing we, um, just up the road from me here, there was an elderly lady passed away. She was a bit of a hoarder. And, uh, there was a guy who owned a, uh, antique shop in the city, uh, curiosity incorporated. And they ended up taking over this house and they called it the Potter's house series. And I mean, it, the production value was as good as something you'd see on the discovery channel. And oh, his cool. first video got like a million views and it just blew his channel up. And oh it, my gosh. it basically yeah. paid for all the renovations on the house, you know? So it, it's, it's cool, right? It, it's just, yeah, awesome. it's, it's a really neat, uh, another Avenue for, you know, entrepreneurs or people with a little bit of freedom or flexibility in their schedule. Sure. Yeah. That's very cool. So you guys, let's uh, let's talk about preparedness a little bit because you guys obviously okay. <laughs> you'd be self 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 professed preppers or at least into preparedness, I would assume. Yeah, um, and that that's a not to you know that's a broad topic. So you know you go wherever yeah. you want with it, but yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean I don't roll around with a gas mask in the back seat of the van or anything like that. So you're but, you're um, practical like me, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, I, um, you know, how I found you was through the survival podcast, Jack Spearco's mm -hmm. stuff. 
And I really kind of ascribe to his kind of line of thinking on that kind of thing. Um, and it really goes back to being debt free and the entrepreneurship stuff. It's it just makes sense when you're basically the only person that can really take care of yourself to have some extra set aside and, um, you know, the tools and stuff that you need to get yourself out of a pinch and protect yourself and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, I'd say other people, if they if they know me or knew how we live, they would call us preppers. Um, maybe not like the doomsday prepper types. Yeah. But, I wouldn't call myself that either, you know? So. Yeah. 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 So I don't think most rational preppers that call themselves that, <laughs> No, but yeah, we, um, we've worked towards that throughout our marriage mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it was pretty slow going early on cause we didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So we've kind of ramped it up, you know, in the last few years and we have really ramped it up in the last couple. Um, so so you, um, obviously your wife, preppers, I guess. Yeah. Your, your wife being a partner in on this, like you, uh, she, she's on board with that too. Is she? Yes, she is. I'm super blessed that I'm, my wife is very much our line of thinking just parallels really, really well. And, um, she's Love very, it. she's very forgiving and puts up with my shenanigans, but, uh, pretty much see eye to eye on most things. And that's, that's one of them. So I don't, I don't know if, if she'd you know, be interested it's not too hard to sell the... down the road. Like I'm going to be doing more episodes with my wife and I'm sure I would love to have you and her on sometime if she'd ever, you know, be so inclined. So I probably could talk her into that. She's in the other mm -hmm. room. She might hear okay. this right now and be, that's all right. Yeah. Just, we'll you know, down the, down the road in, in the new year, we're going to, I think we're going to go to two live streams a week and uh, I'm going to have my cool. wife on at least a couple of times uh, a month. And I'd love to get into more uh, talking to couples and things like that because, you know, family's family. Yeah. Right. And it's not, you're not just a, we, you're not just a standalone dad or a standalone mom. We got to work together on it. Right. So. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you're interviewing me, but she's probably a more integral part of the channel than I am because she does all of the editing, a lot of the filming and, um, you know, her, her hands are really in that. So yeah, that'd be, I think that'd be super fun. She's a good editor too. You can tell her that I, I the videos are awesome. Way better than mine, but okay, I, I yeah. will. Yeah, I try yeah. to, every time I hear a compliment, I try to send it her way. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay. You guys, you, you just went from a, a fairly, you know, a small house, but now you're, you've moved to an even smaller kind of, I think you said 600 square feet in a basement. How have you handled your preps and your preparedness? Yep. What, what have you even done? Like what, what did you do to kind of shift things sideways there? Man. Um, well, it was very interesting. We had to do some strategizing. <laughs> yep. We've got some friends who are um, very close <laughs> to us who, you know, if things got super, super weird, we'd probably, um, we, we would, you know, have a mutual comfort with being in close proximity with each other. So we asked them if they minded if we stored the bulk of our perishable preps with with them. And so we have the majority of our of our food and, you know, a lot of our food based stuff is uh, in their basement. Um, so that took care of a lot of it, which, boy, if you've got you know, a bunch of food preps put up and you go to move, you really start to realize <laughs> yep. it, it adds up super fast. Um, it's been a little tricky being in a small space. Um, you know, we're 25 minutes from the town that we do most of our shopping in. Okay. So if you go run out of something, you know, it's not really feasible to make a trip to town unless you just have to have it. And, in the past, we've had a deep pantry, you know, where we've got multiple duplicates, you know, of things that we use on a regular basis. And now we have less space. So we've actually just this week really tried to maximize, um, you know, that space, you know, and try to deepen our pantry a little bit, kind of recovering from the move. Um, we don't have anything like what we used to, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, it can only do what we can do. And right now we're just we're really trying to focus on the house because getting that goal accomplished will put us so much further down the road with, you know, being prepared and kind of, you know, independent. So, and that's kind of where we're at. Life's so. funny though. Hey, like 
you can try to be as prepared as you want, but there's times when you go through seasons, like where you need to downsize and maybe take a chance or, or like I said, just slimline things so that you can maybe be more prepared and more self-sufficient down the road. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not by any means the same as what, you know, the pioneers and the settlers did back in the day, but it's not <laughs> necessarily dissimilar. Either. You know, those guys, you know, they took the bare minimum with them and, set off on an insane journey and they were kind of had their pants down for a few months there while they were getting set up, but you know, got to take risks. So. Right on. And so what are your goals? Like you guys are, this is kind of cool. I love talking to people who have kind of a blank slate and you're, you're heading toward, but what do you see some of your homesteading preparedness? What are you going to build into your property as you go? Like what are your long-term plans for that kind of stuff? So, um, I guess probably start with the house. The house is going to be built um, very much in the mindset of long term. So, you know, that's part of the reason we chose the ICF, which if you're not familiar with ICF, I might throw this out there real quick for those that don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a foam Lego, basically, that you fill with concrete. So you stack up these foam walls and then come in and pour your concrete in after and so our basement and our first story wall will be solid concrete. Um, so it'll be very durable and very efficient. Um, down the road, solar is very much something I would like to get into. Um, and hopefully it will cost us quite a bit less to put solar in because our heating and cooling costs will be much less because of the efficiency of the house. Um, we're going to put a metal roof on the house. So that Love can metal. be plumbed directly yes oh my gosh i hate asphalt shingles um for so many reasons but yes yeah <laughs> for so many reasons yeah exactly um so you know that'll make for a lot cleaner roof we have a cistern already on site um that i intend to plumb our gutter into and um it's at the highest elevation on the property basically so we'll be able to gra gravity feed gardens or animals or pretty much anything we want from that cistern and i I haven't done the math yet, but I'd say it's well over 5,000 gallons. So, you know, it's Ooh. a consider considerable amount of water. Um, the We kind of put the animals on the back burner right now mm -hmm. just because we have so much going on. We do, we do have yep. chickens. We had chickens in town, and we moved them out here with us when we, we came out. Um, nice. I did get two more chickens, and I chickens don't generally do, that, don't do stuff like that. What's that? Chickens seem to multiply, don't they? When people know you're chicken people, they want to either give them to you or yeah. Yeah, we I actually did some work for a customer and they had these really neat. In fact, actually, I think they're the same cross that uh, Jack has that he's been talking about mm -hmm. lately. They're really cool looking. They were sending them to freezer camp, so I saved them. <laughs> but uh, down the road, um, we'll definitely be building a shop. Um, not having a shop is driving me absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And, um, the shop will be, um, it ha it'll have some living quarters in it in case we need to have a parent or a friend stay with us to kind of help them through life. You know, if we get in a, if they're in a similar situation as we are right now, um, get some more animals down the road. We definitely want to get pigs. Um, we're probably going to get a cow calf pair, maybe, I don't know if we're going to mess with a milk cow or not. That's, that's hmm. remains to be seen, but um, yeah. Um, solar is definitely a high priority. We'll put a wood stove in so that we have backup heat. Um, there's tons of good uh, firewood on the property. So that would nice. be nice. That would be pretty cool. So what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of land is around there? Like a lot of trees and that sort of thing, or. Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty healthy mix of, pasture row crops and um trees so around here there's a lot there's a lot of creeks and small rivers and streams and nice. stuff and you'll generally always find a lot of trees in those areas um a lot of fence rows will have trees up in them and there will be some standing timber i mean there's a fair amount of standing timber also we have a lot of um, like hardwoods oaks and hickory and walnut and you know that sort of thing um in our, you know, specific neck of the woods, there's almost no row crops directly around us. It's all either pasture or woods or, um, you know, something along those lines. So, 
Um, it's it's a pretty good mix. It's not a real hilly country. It's pretty smooth. We're we're in, you know pretty close to Kansas, so it starts getting into the kind of the plains pretty fast if you head west. Joseph says pretty much everything that he doesn't have in Oklahoma. So, oh, hey. <laughs> East Texas Homestead just dropped in to uh, have a drive by to say hello as well. So if you if you know East Texas, he's another YouTuber uh, that's come hey, out of cool. the Survival Podcast. So nice, nice to cool. see you. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, he's awesome. Really good. He does some propane stuff. Just a lot of things. He was in the collab video with us earlier this year. So. Okay, cool. You said he does some propane stuff. What do you mean? Uh, I th the last video, one of the um. Is it refilling the one pound tanks, a bunch yeah, of different some really cool stuff. So a really nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Cool, he's got great. a pretty, pretty good size channel there. And I was going to mention too, back a little ways, Ken said, he goes, most folks who lived rural before the 1950s would be considered preppers or just common sense people. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, and that's really it gets back to what he was saying about um, staying out of debt. What Ken was saying about staying out of debt, because I mean, you were your own support system. So you had to have a deep pantry, you know, for tough times. That's how my grandparents on both sides were, you know, my grandma had a massive garden. She sewed all of her kids clothes. My, my grandma and grandpa on my mom's side had like seven, seven or eight kids. And, <laughs> um, she made all, she made all their own clothes. She had, you know, probably a solid acre and a half of garden. They raised pigs and cows and yeah by today's standard they'd be super preppers but they were just normal back then that that was that was just called being a regular citizen wasn't it i'm pretty sure yeah yeah <clears throat> totally that's it was yeah a responsible citizen <laughs> so what has been i mean i'm sure you've, you've run into a ton but i mean you i i love your story it's awesome it's cool but what what has been I, the biggest challenge the biggest hurdle i don't know the biggest negative aspect of it so far <sighs> And, um, I put you on the spot. See? Yeah. So there's a bit of hurry up and wait right now. Um, that's not, that kind of rubs against my nature. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I get it. We just, yeah. We can't really tear down the house until, um, it, the property is rezoned and everything. Um, and just the delays with, with, um, you know, the ICF blocks are like eight to 10 weeks out from the day of order all the surveyors, all of those people are all very, very backed up. Um, and you know, we're heading into winter. So I'd really like to get this thing kind of going and dried in sooner than later so that, you know, I'm not out there suffering from frostbite as I try to put this thing together. But how um, cold does it get there? Well, it's funny you mentioned that <laughs> last winter was pretty, pretty out of character for Missouri. I think we had some solid days in a row of negative, you know, 10 type temperatures, which is, you know, we definitely are under freezing a lot, but okay. getting into the negative teens for more than one day is pretty not normal for us, but that happened a lot last year. <laughs> so the complete opposite of Alberta then pretty much. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Do, um, are you guys, I don't mind the cold, but... are, are you guys, uh, tornado country there too sorry if i'm a little off on my geography yeah 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 we're definitely in tornado alley in fact we were under a tornado warning or watch i can never get remember which one's the one that actually matters <laughs> but um, i think that's about warning, how but most, i'm not sure yeah that's the attitude of most midwesterners mm -hmm. towards tornadoes <laughs> we're pretty casual about it but yeah they um you know and that's most houses around here do have basements for that reason or storm shelters or something. So, you know, that'll be, are you guys going to build anything in for that? Yeah, we'll definitely have, you know, we'll have a full basement and um, I'm probably going to have a little corner of the basement. That's actually all concrete with like a concrete, you know, ceiling on it. Mm -hmm. In fact, we may, I haven't decided yet. I still have to talk to my architect a little bit more, but we actually are considering having our whole first floor, be concrete um there's some pluses and minuses to that but right now the advantech and a lot of the you know engineered floor joists and stuff are still pretty high mm -hmm. so the gap is still a little closer than it normally is on cost and you know it would be pretty neat to have the entire basement be basically a bunker <laughs> that would be awesome yeah is yeah, it so, so is it something you would actually get some use out of then 
in your area or? Oh yeah. So for, for in our area, like for instance, like right now I live in a basement, so it's a full basement with a, you know, kitchen, bathroom, bedrooms, the works. Um, and a lot of people in our area finish out their basements. So we will be doing probably nine and a half foot uh, basement walls. And nice. so even after the floor joists go in, we'll have, you know, probably eight foot ceilings. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll put a bedroom down there and we'll probably stub in some plumbing for, um, a bathroom and a kitchenette down the road. Um, so we can finish it out and add some square foot to the house later on. That'll be awesome. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it's neat. Like, I, I guess Alberta actually is probably one of the, I know it sound funny, but like one of the most temperate weather wise, like I grew up on the East coast where, you know, sometimes we'd get the tail end of hurricane, sometimes like a level mm -hmm. two or whatever, but blizzards were horrible there. Like we'd get, you know, sure. 12, 18 inches of wet, heavy snow or worse. Right. But out here, <laughs> oh, man. it's pretty rare. Like we, I'm sure you've seen, or maybe haven't, but we, you know, once, once December gets here, I can blow the snow off with a backpack blower. Like it's Florida sand. Ted's not in here tonight, but he always yeah, loves yeah. hearing that. Cause he's from Florida, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen you uh, bust out the snow the the leaf blower to move snow around. That's pretty cool. Down here, usually the snow's pretty wet. Um, mm -hmm. It's not uncommon for us to get a few inches of snow and then it'd be gone within twenty four hours or forty eight hours or something like that. But um, you know, every once in a while we'll get some powdery stuff. But so, what's yeah, the we get most extreme or sorry most extreme weather you'd get in your area that you'd have to kind of deal with? Um, it, so we get into the, you know, 90 high 90 humidity. Um, and then winter, you know, like I said, we can get into the 15 below 20 below that's, you know, not days and days of it. Usually. Um, I think the most severe weather I have ever seen in my life was when I was a kid, we had a massive ice storm mm. and it took down power lines everywhere. It was awesome. <laughs> we were we were basically camping in the house for like a week and a half. We didn't have power, and I thought it was great. I was sad when it was over. <laughs> but, <laughs> Funny uh, how that is. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yes, ice storms can really do a number on power lines around here. Uh, depending on what part of Missouri you're in, flooding can be a major concern. Um, I've got family that are big time farmers, probably thirty minutes, forty five minutes, nah, thirty minutes from here. And they farm in the in the bottom uh, river bottoms, and okay, uh, I've seen floods that can take houses and tractors and move them around. So, oh yes, yeah, sir. Okay, yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, everywhere has its weather, right? But it's cool. Yeah. I, I every time I talk to somebody from a different part of the country, I always love to get a feel for what life's like because it's ah, it's just neat, you know. Sure. I think honestly, though, as far as the rest of the country goes our weather's pretty mild. We don't have forest fires. We don't have mudslides. We don't really have earthquakes, you know, tornadoes freak some people out, but I've never seen a tornado in my life. I've seen where they've gone through, but mm -hmm. no, it's not that big of a deal. So, you know, it's pretty uh, chill living here in Missouri for sure. So the house that you're building, I'm, what are some skills that you've never done before that you're looking forward to learning building this? Oh man. Um, well, planning a house build is definitely a skill that I do not have that I am currently trying to get. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that will probably be the biggest one. Just thinking ahead and planning everything you're going to need. And especially right now with, um, you know, wait times on materials and stuff, trying to schedule that stuff. So you don't get to the next stage and then realize you should have ordered that, you know, three months before. Um, I'm trying to not be in that position as far as skills go. Um, I'm not real keen on electrical. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be leaning on some other people's expertise with that pretty heavy. I've never dug a basement before. I'm going to dig my own basement. Um, make sure you take video concrete. of that. I got to see it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. All that's going to, all of this is going to get videoed. So I'm hoping to do do some pretty good time-lapse stuff on some of the, some of that stuff that's going to take a long time, but it will look pretty neat. Mm. Um, concrete work. I've messed with it a little bit. Um, but like I said, it's not something I'm super familiar with, but I'm, like I said, I'm going to hire out the flat work. So, you know, 
I'll just be pouring the walls. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with plumbing. I'm going to do all that myself. Um, like I can frame everything. I'm not worried about that. The um, HVAC, I have a real good friend. It's actually the guy who's got our food stored in his basement. He's a commercial HVAC guy and uh, very, very knowledgeable. So we're going to actually work some trade. He's going to come out and help me get all that stuff put in. So, but yeah, I'd say just planning the entire thing is probably the most intimidating part of it, to be honest, especially since I'm not super organized. <laughs> and this will this will bring everything together, too. Like this is probably one of those. Um, I mean, it, it it's an opportunity to bring every skill you've learned in the past, bring them all together and kind of learn something new, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's really funny. I feel like um, the house we just sold was kind of like the training wheel yeah, yeah. for this project. And <laughs> they just came off <laughs> and we're going downhill. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I've kind of got to the point where I've got enough know-how that I feel like I can just dive in and figure it out. And, you know, Do you ever not too you ever get nervous? Like I, you know, it's funny. I had to put some windows in the other day and I hadn't done windows in a, you know, probably a year. Right. So the night before I'm like, oh, honestly, I was nervous again. It, it's fun. Like it, yeah. it's a good nervous, but so do, do you too sometimes yeah. or. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I just did a project, um, this summer for some friends, they wanted a 36 by 15 covered porch added on to their shop house. Yes, sir. And uh, we, we did like <laughs> timber frame. So we had huge cedar timbers, like six by eight. And I think we even had some eight by 10, maybe uh, cedar wow. timbers. And um, I did that. The homeowner helped me when I needed it. But I did basically the whole thing by myself. That was that was really stretching my um, my skills and my comfort level. And it went great. Um, it turned out really Really nice they're super happy with it and nobody died so <laughs> are, pretty are you your you know, own worst critic I, um are you not too probably bad. safe to say yeah yeah i'm not super hard on myself but i i tend to do a decent job managing my expectations so well that's good it's, i i try to deliver a quality project um to people i'm but i also deliver the level of work for the level of cost. So, I mean, kind of try to balance. Yeah. That. I, can I ask you, I, I know we never talked about it a whole lot, but you mentioned homeschooling. We still got a few more minutes, but um, yes, how, how have you guys balanced that out uh, with this move and everything as well? Um, so Hannah, my wife is an angel and has the most <laughs> insane amount of patience that I think I've ever seen. Um, she was homeschooled basically her entire life. And so she has kind of a bit of a foundation to work off of. Okay. Um, every kid's different. So, you know, like my oldest is a lot like me. I actually was severely dyslexic when I was in school and I've kind of gotten over that now, but, um, it was definitely a challenge early on. And I think he's probably deals with a little bit of that, but, um, she has done a really good job of keeping everything on track and on schedule and uh, adjusting, you know, the, the boys don't really like to do school. They'd rather be outside helping dad, you yep. know, build driveways and tear down trees and demolish houses and stuff. So we have to be really creative in how we motivate them to get their schoolwork done so that, you know, they can come pitch in. But um, yeah, she's done a really good job and she, she kind of pieces together the curriculum a little bit. Um, finds what, what works for her and the kids. And mm -hmm. um, so she does a little bit of uh, hybrid, you know, type stuff. So what's, uh, what's next for you? you? ICF, is that, or you're going to dig the basement? Is that the next thing or where, where are you heading? Yeah, so, so next thing will be as soon as the, the property is legally ours, I'll demo the house and uh, we're going to, I've got to remove some of the stuff that you don't want to burn. And then, then we'll be burning the, you know, the burnables. And mm -hmm. then once that's done, we'll start digging the basement. Um, as soon as my architect gives me the go ahead, I'm ordering the ICF blocks. And then we've got a, a stopwatch that starts when that happens. And when those show up, it's time to party. That's so, awesome. 
I'm going to be watching yeah. that with bated breath. I, I want it. I, I used to sell ICF at the hardware store where I worked for a lot of years and I loved the oh, concept, cool. but I haven't yeah. done it. So I yeah. would, yeah, I'll, I'll be watching. It'll be good, man. Yeah. I'm excited. I really, it's, it's going to be, it's very DIY friendly and it's, it's going to be very easy for the, the wife and kids to help, you know, the blocks only weigh 10 pounds, maybe. Um, so we can all pitch in and have a blast building Legos. That's awesome. So, and we're coming up on an hour here. So tell us then, I, wh where can we find you? Uh, what are your social media presences? Other people want to, you know, definitely get out there and follow Skylar for sure. So tell me, yeah, what do you, what do you need to tell us about you? Okay. So, well, we're definitely on YouTube. Um, we've, we've been doing that basically since we started this project and we're working really hard to try to grow our, our presence there. I just kind of took over the Instagram stuff. Um, I've got some experience with running Instagram in the past for a business I used to have. Okay. So I'm taking over that for mama so she doesn't have to worry about it because it's not really in her wheelhouse and she's working like crazy to edit videos. So we're basically on Instagram and YouTube. I have a personal MeWe account and then we definitely want to get um, our videos up on Odyssey. We haven't done that yet. Um, unfortunately, but that will be coming for sure. Our uh, resident country music artist here, Greg Arcade, he's from Manitoba, real cool dude. He wants to know what your channel name is. Oh, yeah. I'm not very good at this promotion thing, am I? <laughs> it's on, G Tribe your own Chronicles. Horn. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're good. G Tribe Chronicles. So we'll, if you look that up on YouTube, we've got like 80 something subs. So if you find somebody with a little bitty channel, that's us. <laughs> and we and definitely appreciate it. It should be in the description of this live stream. I'm like 98% sure I put it there. And if I forgot, it'll be there before it finishes doing whatever it does after the live stream finishes up. So awesome. I really appreciate that, Tim. Yeah, no, no worries. And guys, you got to check it out because they, they have something special with their, their vlog kind of channel. They obviously they're in love. You can tell that, but they just, they, they get along well. They, they put out good content and they're, they're really cool, really cool family. So it's fun to watch. Well, I, it's, it's been really great talking to you. I've, I've been watching you well before you hit a thousand subs and it's, it's kind of fun talking with you and hanging out. You know, I feel like I already know you cause I watch your content, but, uh, I've had a blast talking with you. No, thanks Skylar. We'll, uh, we'll definitely look at getting you and the missus back on down the road for sure. So I'll, uh, if you want to hang on just a second, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll slide you out of the video here. I'll finish up and, uh, we'll chat for a minute afterwards. Sounds good. Thanks guys. All right, guys. So that was an awesome interview. Uh, thanks again for Skylar dropping on. I, I just, yeah, it's great. Thanks guys. Have a good night, Chris. Uh, it was nice having you guys in here. And like I said, next Thursday uh, or this Thursday coming will be next week's live stream. So we'll meet you guys all there. Same time, seven o'clock mountain, nine o'clock Eastern. And guys, thanks for dropping by. Cause I know you can spend your time anywhere. And I always appreciate you hanging out with us in the workshop. So as always guys, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.